alternating series test. An alternating series is a series whose terms are alternate, alternately positive and negative. Okay. And here we have two examples, example one and example two. Usually the, the alternating series will include the part of the formula negative one to the n, or negative one to the n plus one, or negative one to the n minus one, depends if the terms, the first term is positive or negative. And then we will have a main formula, like the magnitude, that means this is that main, we will call b sub n. Yeah, for this one is one over n for the second one, but yes, let's focus on the first one. Actually, I can remove this for a second. Negative one to the n, n over n plus one. N, n plus one, one over two, two over three, three over four, four over five, and so on. And then we have the alternation, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. So we subtracting, adding, subtracting, adding, okay? Um, okay, and we have to determine whether this alternating series is convergent or divergent. And this is, let's actually look at this one really quick, negative one to the n over n. It's mean the main formula, which we can call it b sub n, it's one over n. One over one, one over two, one over three, one over four, five, and then alternation. Uh, adding negative number, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and so on. Okay, looking at the first formula, probably we can notice that we may apply the old test, test for divergence. When we grab the sequence, alternating sequence, of course, negative one and n plus one. In order to find the limit of alternating sequence, we may apply the absolute value. Absolute value will remove negative one to the n because it will always be positive, n over n plus one, is, it is positive and it stays positive. Limit of n over n plus one is one, yeah, n over n, one. And if the limit is different than zero, then the original sequence does, the limit does not exist. Yeah, because we may think that part was one and the alternation is like positive, negative. Yeah, that's not right. The limit does not exist as a one finite number. And if the limit does not exist or is different than zero, original uh, series is divergent. No chance for convergence. Divergent by test for divergence and divergence test, but I like to call it test for divergence. Okay, that's, that's done. We don't even need a new tool. Now let's look at this one. This one, when we apply this limit, this theorem to compute the limit, we will get zero. Limit at infinity, negative one to the n, one over n, alternating sequence, applying absolute value, negative one to the n will be gone, one over n, one over, one over big number, it's a small number. Then if the limit of absolute value is zero of this sequence, then this is also zero. Yeah, then this is also zero. And if the limit of the sequence is zero, we know nothing about convergence or divergence. Test for divergence is not applicable, doesn't work. Yeah, we will need a, we will need a new tool. Before I show you the new tool, and I can try to prove a little bit, just a little bit, let's uh, look at few things. These terms, like not including the alternation, because alternation is plus, minus, plus, minus. The main magnitude, one over n. One over n must be positive. That's, of course, the main reason. Uh, I mean, that's the one of the important thing, because when one over n, if this will have different sign, then we will, uh, the alternation will be messed up a little, because we always have to have positive terms, yeah? these terms, no, not including alternation. Alternation is alternation, but the main formula is positive. Also, I would like to know that these terms are approaching zero. They, yeah, they're getting smaller than they approaching zero. Uh, 
at infinity, the limit at infinity is zero. And also we have to make sure that V sub M is decreasing. Okay, that's the important part because if we, if this main formula is not satisfying this condition, then we will have another problem. But let's assume that we, yes, I mean, this, this is actually the case. This is the case. One over N, it's positive limit is zero and decreasing. Probably you will say, oh, if the limit is zero, the terms are decreasing. It's partially true, but it's not always the case. This one, of course, it's relative, it's so easy formula, one over n, limit is zero, and the terms are decreasing, the terms are getting smaller and smaller. But we may have, just, just for the information, we may have a crazy formula that the limit is zero, but the terms itself are not decreasing. It's something like maybe this. I don't know the formula, probably it's crazy. But the, this sequence, I'm saying like sequence, yeah, the, just the dots, because we, let's notice increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. It's they are not decreasing. Huh? They are just increasing, like they are alternating in this monotonicity. But however, the whole uh, ter, like the, the, the whole pattern is approaching zero. Yeah. It means we may have a limit zero, but not decreasing. But yeah, always we have to make sure that it's also decreasing because that will be not good. And now, when the terms are positive, limit zero decreasing, uh, we we may create a certain a certain like uh, we may conclude something. Before we do this, let's look at my proof a little bit. I promise. I just want to make sure that we you believe me. And as always, you don't have to like know how to repeat the proof, but it would be nice if you will understand. So in what I put, all of the terms, we can see that's the terms. And I am claiming that the terms are decreasing. I'm not taking this alternation part. I'm just taking B sub N. Second term, smaller than the previous one. Third term, smaller than the second one, and so on, decreasing. And every other term is odd and even. That's the formula for the even to n. That's the formula for the odd to n plus one. We know that. Now, what I will do, uh, I have two parts of this proof. Uh, I focus on the even number of terms and I focus on adding the odd numbers of terms. It means partial sum of the even numbers. Even means that like a sub two, a sub four, adding two terms, adding four terms, adding six terms, eight terms, and, uh, even terms, and then 100, maybe 200, maybe 220, even terms. That means just the even for now. And yeah, this is an example. I just stop at six, but now I'm arranging them a little bit different to look at different properties. When I combine them by two terms, since they are decreasing, B sub two is smaller, then this difference is positive. This is also positive. This is also positive. Then when we add in positive terms, we increasing the whole sum. I mean, this will be always a little bit greater, a little bit greater. I mean, this partial sum of the even, adding even number of terms is increasing. Yeah? As a new sequence, of course, partial sum, new sequence increasing. Now I'm I'm tricking a little bit the numbers, okay? I'm leaving this one as a first one and then flipping the numbers. We can see B sub three is positive. B, I mean, no, no, no. We adding, yeah, plot positive with rest. I mean, they are positive. B, uh, B sub three, what I was trying to say, has a plus in front and B sub two has a minus. That means I didn't change anything. It's still the same partial sum. But rearranging them, I've got B sub three minus B sub two, since B sub two is greater, yeah, because the other, the, the, the later terms are smaller. That means this is negative. This difference is negative. This difference is negative and this difference is negative. That means what, what I created, I have a number B sub one, like somewhere on the top, and then we subtracting, subtracting, subtracting. Then, and this is the entire sum. That's what I can say that the partial 
sum of the even numbers is bounded above. We have a maximum, like a higher value limit, and all of the term we subtracting here yeah, because this is negative. So if, yeah, just in general look, when we have a sequence increasing and bounded above, yeah, in general, in general, let's say this is the first term. Mm, I can say a sub one, yeah, and then another one, another one, another one. And we know that it's bounded above, and I can call it S. Yeah, it's bounded above. Then if it's the terms are increasing and bounded above, always the sequence is convergent. Yeah, that's, that's my conclusion. I state this, that partial sum of the even numbers at the moment is convergent by monotonic con um, uh, monotonic convergent test. I just call it this way, but this is from the sequences. Yeah, it's, it's not, I should maybe not call it test because test we will save for the, all of the series. But if the sequence, if the terms of the sequence are increasing and have limits above, that's actually the limit. This is, yeah, the sequence is convergent. I mean, we may say that these terms are approaching a finite number S. And I have the same proof on the odd numbers. You can check later, but I have a little bit shortcut. Let's look at this. When I take the sum, partial sum of seven terms, odd, uh, partial sum of seven terms is partial sums of six terms plus one extra term, seven, one. Yeah? And then when I subtract seven terms minus six terms, we will end up with B sub seven. And for, the, for these, I use the general notation, seven, it's the odd number, six is the even number, yeah, we subtracting. So when I subtract, I will get that term. And what we know now, as n goes to the infinity, this is our partial sum of the even numbers, goes to zero. The terms also goes to zero, because we remember the condition, the limit of b sub n is zero. Oh, no, not zero, S. Oh, I wanted to say S. <laughs> S, the partial sum of the even numbers goes to S. This goes to zero. And this one has no option because what number minus S is zero? Of course, also S. I mean, this is a really, really shortcut to show that the partial sum of the odd numbers also is approaching the same sum s. It's been, yeah? Even and odd numbers, adding even, adding odd number of terms, uh, number, numbers of terms will go to the finite number s. This alternating series, B sub, like the, the series, is convergent and the partial sums are approaching. That, and now I'm not distinguish the difference even or not, the entire sum of the any terms will go to S, finite number. Okay, but what is important, the B sub N formula on its own must be positive, limit must be zero at infinity, and yeah, we can see zero, and decreasing yeah, the terms itself, because if the terms itself are not decreasing, yeah? My proof is not right. This will be not greater than zero or less than zero. Yeah? So that's what we claim. Then the always with these three conditions, the sum will exist as a finite number. Okay. Thank you for yes for watching this proof. I have another. Yeah, let's see this. Uh, the same thing for the odd numbers. Odd numbers will be partial sum will be decreasing bounded below, but the same thing. I show you the shortcut on the other. And then I can all I also have, I also have this nice proof. Yeah? Let's look at this. The pink lines represent the terms, yeah? B sub one, B sub two, B sub three, and then the signs, positive, negative, represents the summation. So let's know, and we know that the, the pink lines are getting smaller, decreasing, yeah? decreasing. B sub one is this, and then this will be S sub one. 
then I'm subtracting B sub two, then this will be the sum of two terms. And I'm adding B sub three, this will be S sub three. And then subtracting, adding, subtracting, adding, so we can see what with these conditions, we alternate uh, the sum, partial sums, alternate between, I mean, alt alternate uh, around this number, and this number is the limit, S, the finite number. But one more time, B sub N must be positive, B sub N limit at infinity must be zero, one, two, three, and B sub N must be decreasing. Now we can see the pink lines. Then we can conclude that the alternating, we have to have the alternation also. We have to, because we can see positive, negative, positive, negative. This alternating series will be convergent, always convergent to S. Convergent to the sum. Always this condition will lead to the uh, finite number, right? And let's see, I put this. That's the alt, oh, too fast, alternating series test. That's what we will be using. As soon as we see the alternation, we may apply the alternating series test. So that's how we can look at the formula, yeah? the main magnitude and the alternation, B sub one, B sub two. And now we will look at this, positive limit zero decreasing. Then we can conclude convergence. We don't have to do anything. We know that this will converge. And based, again, I have another like, picture, I mean, another graphical S sub one, S sub two, S sub three, and we'll alternate around S. Yeah, I have in the horizontal position that previous picture. Yeah? Because we adding, subtracting, adding, subtracting, but that condition, because if the terms are not positive, that alternation is messed up. If the limit is not zero, no chance for convergence. Uh, and decreasing, of course, decreasing. Important note, important comment. This test is only testing convergence. Okay? If something is not right, if you if we cannot verify this free hypothesis, this free conditions, then we're not using AST. That's what we will call it, AST. Yeah? AST, alternating series test, can only conclude convergence. Okay? Please never say. Oh, this infinite series is convergent. It's it's divergent by AS. No, 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 no. We cannot say this. Okay, let's apply it. Okay, that's actually our uh, um, original um, problem from from uh, from first slide. And you may also notice that we may call it this one alternating harmonic. Oh, I didn't alternating harmonic because it's negative one to the n and one over n, okay? And alternating harmonic is actually convergent yes? by alternating series test. But let's prove it. The formula B sub n is one over n, positive. Limit of B sub n at infinity is zero. Actually, let me write a little bit nicer. First condition, second condition. Limit of, oh yeah, one over n, it is zero. I wanted to align the zeros, of course. Check, check. And b sub n equals to one over n. We don't even have to prove it exactly. But this is, because it's all, I mean, it's algebraically, it's obvious, it's decreasing, yeah, decreasing. And when we okay with this, then we can conclude convergence one more time. This is convergent by AST, alternating series test. We satisfy. But please also notice that if we do not have this alternation, we, we don't need to check this. Yeah? Because somebody can say, oh, one over n, the harmonic series, we know that is divergent. Yeah, this is harmonic. 
harmonic series divergent. Yeah, because that's what I saw. Let me put nicely my ASD. Oh, too many dots. Let's remove some of them. Yeah, this, of course, this still stay because what's ha what happened, one over N, I cannot grab this one over N and test it because I can only look at these three conditions if we have the alternation. Yeah, this one now, this one is harmonic. We adding one over one, one over two, one over three, not, not subtracting. But this condition and the alternation will give us convergence. The sum will converge to S. Whatever the S is, we cannot find the S at the moment, but we know that the S, the sum, the partial sum exists as a finite number. Okay. Uh, let me write maybe something like this. AST is of course not applicable to this because it's not alternating. Okay, let's do exercise number two. Oh, that's actually showing us the, um, uh, the terms like one over one, like adding, subtracting, and this is the sum. Yeah, the sum S sub one, S sub two, S sub three, the partial sums will approach S. And in this case, it's around 0.7, but we don't, yes, we don't know how to find this yet. We don't know. Okay. Um, let's look at this one. Exercise number two. Now, exercise number two. The formula negative one to the N. Yes, we have alternation. Three um, N over four N plus one. Okay, that's, we have definitely alternating. We may try to apply alternating series test. The formula B sub n is 3n, 4n plus 1. Well, that's how we, we just, and we will analyze. This is positive because n starts from 1. Now, limit at infinity must be 0. And do you think this limit is 0? This limit is not zero. So we're satisfying this. We're not satisfying that condition. And I don't even have to check if it's decreasing. B sub n decreasing. Let me decreasing. We don't know. Yeah, I will not check because this one is actually not as easy to. Right? That's we may say that the alternating series test does not work. Yeah? Please do not conclude something like we're not allowed to say this test is not letting us to say this infinite series is divergent by AST. No, no such a thing exists. But since the limit failed, we may say this is divergent by test for divergence. Yeah? Because if we grab the formula, the same thing. It's alternating sequence. When we apply the absolute value, then the negative one, it's gone. And this limit, yeah, as we just, it's different than zero. If the limit is different than zero of this alternating sequence, then the original original sequence with the, alt the alternating one, the limit does not exist. We may think, okay, the main part gave us three over four and the alternation is giving us positive, negative, positive, negative. Yeah, this is our thinking. The terms like oscillate between positive, negative, three over four, then the limit does not exist. If the limit does not exist, this will, this infinite, series is divergent, but not by AST, test for divergence, nth divergence, divergent test, nth term, thanks, divergent test, okay? But not AST, I think this is an example that we fail one of the condition. We may still, yes, look at AST, but not, no conclusion. Okay, exercise number three. Okay, alternate alternating series and negative one to the n n squared over n cubed plus one. 
Okay, the formula B sub n looks like n squared n cubed plus one. It's definitely positive because n starts from one. Limit at infinity is n squared versus n cubed. Of course, it's zero. Denominator winning. Now, B sub n uh, decreases. Okay, this is check, this is check. I would say this is question mark, okay? Uh, because we don't know, we in, we making bigger numerator and denominator, n squared, one squared, two squared, three squared, n cubed. It, I believe is decreasing, but how can we verify? Yeah? And if this is like the nice open-ended question, we really have to, uh, do the justification. And the easiest way to find the intervals of increase or decrease, we're looking for decrease in this case, it's to find the derivative. Yeah? First derivative is positive, then function is increasing. First derivative is negative, then the function is decreasing. Okay, I will create a function n squared x squared n cubed will become x cubed minus one. And let's find the derivative. Yeah, because that's the, the proper way to prove that function is the formula, the expression is decreasing. Okay, I will use the quotient rule. 2x, x cubed minus 1 minus x squared times 3x squared. Yeah, I don't have to comment this. We all know how to find the derivative. And what we getting? 2x to the power of 4, 2x minus 3x to the power of 4, uh, okay, I can maybe, maybe I can go this way, it's not, uh, what we will have, we will have negative 1x to the power of 4 minus 2x, okay, x cubed minus 1 squared, we can factor out x, we will have x cubed minus 2, x cubed minus 1 squared, okay. We have nice product form. Am I actually right? This is four, one, factoring out negative on plus, right? Because when we factor out negative x, this will be positive, positive times negative becomes negative, negative, correct. Okay, so now we have to figure out where this formula, because this is derivative, is negative. Denominator is not affecting the sign because denominator, quantity in the denominator is squared. So we can only focus on this. And we will need a critical numbers. Critical numbers are the zeros from the, from the top and from the bottom, but we will not include the bottom because since it's always positive. Uh, okay, that means critical numbers are zero and negative cube root of two because when this is negative, am I actually, no, I am right, negative, negative, okay. Uh, negative cube root of two will give us negative two plus two zero, okay. So now, first derivative first, this is negative number, but let's check, and this is zero. And we will test the sign of the first derivative. When we substitute big number, like, I mean, greater than zero. This will be positive, this will be negative, and this is always positive, negative. Then when we will put negative number, like negative one, yeah, this will be positive, this will be negative. Am I right? Mm. Oh, but no, 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 this is tiny interval, but however, because negative cube root of two, it's actually, what is negative? It's supposed to, yeah, it's supposed to work or maybe, do we have a cube? I'm just trying to, okay, let's check. Oh, I don't want to mess up. 
Uh, okay, let's no 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 let's let's think. Okay, no negative uh, cube root of two is a little bit more than one. That's mean one point one or one point two negative. That's mean a negative one was a good test value. When we substitute negative one cube plus two, it will be this quantity will be negative, but negative and negative will be positive. Okay. And uh, this one, but as I said, we don't even have to use our time to investigate the sign because we are, with respect to the sequence, uh, on the positive part only. Yeah, like when we only concern if x becomes n, we're looking just for the number like starting from one. And starting from one to infinity, this expression, this derivative is negative, always negative. If this is negative, that means I can say this derivative is less than zero for all x's actually starting from zero. Then our sequence, yeah, b sub n is also less than zero for all n greater than one. Okay. And if it's if and if this is less than zero, b sub n is definitely decreasing, decreasing. We good. And that's what we have to prove it. We have alternation, we satisfying all of this condition. Our, oh, actually, this formula is convergent by AST. This infinite series is convergent by alternating series test. We can see that the proving of decreasing took, took time, but yeah, we ne please never assume, always prove that this is decreasing. Okay, another one. Negative one to the n, alternating one, e to the one over n over n. Oh, interesting. The b sub n is e to the power of one over n over, over n. This is definitely positive because we starting from positive numbers, e to the power of n number is positive and n is positive. Now limit how this sequence behaves at infinity. One over big number is a small number. That means this will be e to the power of zero over a big number. Yeah, I can't write one over big number is a small number, zero. Let's just don't write this. This is zero. Okay, check and check. And now again, is b sub n decreasing? Uh, we may um, list the terms of the sequence. We will have e to the power of one over one. And then we will have a square root because one half will give us square root of e to the power of two cube root of e i mean over two over three four root of e to the uh, over four but i don't know we don't know is this decreasing decreasing yeah we have this we have this and let's put the question mark, and then we will make the conclusion, convergent or divergent. And let's do the same thing. The easiest way is to grab a function, e to the one over x over x, find the derivative, and prove that for all of the x's greater than one, derivative is negative. Then the corresponding formula is decreasing. Okay, derivative e to the power of one over x derivative is the same function e to the power of one over x times derivative of one over x negative one over x squared times denominator. Well, let me come back. Did I? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I have the right derivative. I'm just, okay, minus e to the power of one over x times derivative of x is what? Over x squared. Let's make it nice. Let's factor out e to the x, and then we can simplify these x's, one and x, just x. It will be negative one over x minus one over x squared. 
and we can get the common denominator e to the power of one over x is never zero. X squared is always positive. And this one will be both negatives, both negatives, negative one minus x over x, if I am right. Negative one, x over x is one, negative one. Okay, so now we have to also investigate, is this expression always, oh, let's do one thing, let's factor out negative. Negative, and then one plus x, this x we can drop down, and this is x squared. And we can also analyze the critical point. Critical point is negative one, actually. But let's see, this is negative. e to the power of any number is always positive. One plus x, let's assume that x starts from one. It's always positive, positive, positive. That means the entire expression is always positive, but this will give us less than zero. I mean, this expression, this derivative is less than zero for all x's, let's say greater than or equal to one. This will be always positive with that negative is negative. Less than zero for all of the x's. That means yes, if it's derivative is less than zero, function is definitely decreasing. Check, check, and check. This infinite series is convergent convergent by alternating series test. Okay, I think I have one more and yeah, we will be done practicing. You may redo all of the problems or you can look at any alternating series. Okay, one more. Negative one to the n, natural log of n over n. Alternating one, let's pull out the formula b sub n natural log of n over n. Definitely positive if n is greater or interesting, more than three. Okay, it's definitely positive. Uh, but not even natural log of n looks like this, is positive above the x-axis starting from one. Maybe not including one because one will give us zero, but it's still fine. Okay, limit behavior at infinity of natural log of n versus n. Natural log of n is slower function, n is faster, denominator is winning, it is zero. And the same scenario is b sub n decreasing. Natural log of n, natural log of one over one, natural log of two over two. We, uh, we don't know right away derivative. Decreasing, question mark. Let's take a function, natural log of x over x, derivative. Derivative of ln of x is one over x times denominator minus ln of x times derivative of the denominator one, x squared. Okay, we have one minus ln of x. Okay, that means this, we want this derivative to be negative. Let's find out where is negative. Denominator is not affecting the sign because it's x squared, only numerator. I mean, I will say I want one minus ln of x to be less than zero. Yeah, to be less than zero. Then this, this means that derivative is less than zero. If this is less than zero, we can subtract one we can multiply by positive one. I mean, multiply by negative both sides to get positive one, then we're flipping the direction. And then natural log of n, one is natural log of e. And then I can drop the logarithm because function is increasing. n is greater than e. In sec a first derivative will be negative starting from e negative starting from E and positive probably here. Okay? But E, it's around 2.7. The first integer after E, it's three. 
it's minyes, it's decreasing and it's fine. It's perfectly fine. Decreasing on the intervals starting from three because we're only taking integers. And that's the reason that you will most likely see three if the logarithmic function is involved, natural logarithmic, because everything works after e decreasing or maybe positive values. Yeah? But this is always a little bit. But yes, starting from for all of the ends greater than, uh, oh, something is wrong. I'm supposed to put x. I think I was excited. X, 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 oh, X. However, when I will put N, then I will say for all of the values greater than or equal to three, because N is integers. I cannot really use E. Okay. It's mean, yes, we are good. Function is decreasing. And then we can conclude convergence. This is convergent, convergent by alternating series test. Excellent practice. Thank you.